Wonderful. Welcome, everyone. I am Sunshine Menezes. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to this session on joy and healing as an othered person by Manny Jade Garcia. Um, we are really excited to have you here today. And I want to just remind you quickly to please abide by the code of conduct at all times. Um, I will share a link to that in the chat in just a moment. If you have any concerns about the conduct of a participant at any time, you can alert me via private chat, or you can send a note directly to conduct at metcalfinstitute.org and we'll address the issue. Um, also, obviously we have ASL interpreters here today. We also have a live captioner and you can see the, um, the transcript by clicking on the either the CC button on the bottom of the Zoom screen, or uh, if you don't have that button, then you'll look at the little button that says more with the three dots and then click show subtitle and it will show you all of the captions. And with that, I'm very happy to pass this over to Manny Jade. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sunshine. And really, I'm really excited that everyone's here. I'm so happy to be back. And the picture that you see is from the last time that we had our Inclusive SciComm Symposium. That was two years ago. What a different world we live in <laughs> than two years ago. Wow, it, like it blows my mind how different things are. One thing hasn't changed though. Like I love being around all of you. I love it. I love your energy. And the reason I use this photo, so in this photo, there are a bunch of people standing up dressed really nice in a conference looking room and they all have their hands in a prayer position, namaste in front of their hearts. Some of their eyes are open, some of their eyes are closed. Almost every single person is smiling. If you were there, if you remember that energy, um, I want you to try to recall that. And we're gonna try to recreate it together today. It was a really beautiful experience. The name of this talk is Joy and Healing as Othered People. I'm Manny Jade Garcia. My pronouns are they and them. And I'm really excited to get started. Um, in, in the background here, I have a, an avocado tree that I'm growing. I have a plant over here that you can't see um, because of where I put the computer. This is my partner's grandfather who just passed away. And so uh, we wanted him to be along for the ride. And um, I have a Zen symbol here. I have some tea. I have something to write. And so I encourage people to have something to write and <clears throat> we'll get going with that, okay? I want you to be comfortable. This is, I've been interpreting this uh, session for part of it and I've been attending because um, I'm a part of this community and I'm really uh, touched at how much everyone here works. We're some really hardworking people and so what I want to do is I want to do something different because all of you work a lot. This is a quote from one of my favorite people right now, Zenju Earth Emanuel. She's a queer black Buddhist. And I just want to look at this quote together. Look at her face. First of all, look at, look at the, the joy <laughs> in her face and, and the energy in her face. This picture um, is a black woman, dark skin, very short hair. She looks a little bit older. She's wearing some beautiful robe looking like clothing, big smile on her face, warm eyes, deep eyes. And the quote says, few people in the world stop together all at once to listen to the world. Think about that for a second. That's true. When's the last time that we or you got together with some people and stopped? I mean, because of COVID, we, we can't even get together with people. And I really miss that, right? I remember with all of you, last time we did this was at the last symposium when we had our stretching, when we had our meditation section. Um, but today, today is about stopping. Today is about pausing, right? And so I know all of you, uh, I don't know you personally, but I know your energy because I have the same energy. We have a world to change. We have problems to solve. And we're always busy doing and doing and doing and doing. 
And sometimes we forget to stop. Sometimes we forget that maybe there's other things we can learn. And there are other benefits to just stopping for a second. And I saw a talk by this Zenju Earth Emanuel, and she said, you know, people who are involved in social justice, they, they get into these deep conversations about difficult, painful topics, and they don't prepare themselves. They don't prepare their minds, and they don't prepare their hearts for the discussion. And she promised, she said, you know, I promise if you just take a minute to stop, just even a minute, you're going to respond differently. You're going to feel differently. You're going to learn things that you haven't learned before. You're going to see things differently. So the challenge for all of us today, including me, is, is to spend more time not doing, <laughs> listening, stopping. If you, have, if you have the urge to say something, um, we're going to talk at the end. I want to interact with you. But for most of this, I just want you to stop and listen. I'm going to share some ideas. We're going to have lots of time for breaks and breathing and thinking. If you have something you really want to say, please write it down so we can talk about it later. Especially if you have an automatic response where you feel like something is difficult or you feel like rejecting something, resistance, I want you to write that down because that's where learning happens. That's where wisdom happens. All right. So we're going to start. Here's the agenda. We're going to have a brief grounding exercise. We're going to talk about othering and mental health. We're going to have a full body check-in. We're going to talk about concepts and joy and healing. Then we're going to do some mindful breathing together. And then we have reflection, discussion, and brainstorming. And then we're going to have a brief energizing exercise. So this is skewed more towards not doing much. It's like <laughs> mindful practices, self-care practices. Um, one of the things Zenju said is she'll go to a talk that's like 50 minutes long and five minutes of it are spent preparing <laughs> our emotions for 50 minutes of pain, 50 minutes of challenge, you know, 45 minutes of, of scratching our heads and trying to soothe each other's hearts. Right? So we're going to spend more time. I, I don't have to tell you what we're going to talk about. You already know. That's why you're here. We're all here because we are other people. I don't have to tell you that. So I want to spend more time. I want to challenge us to try another way to engage in these conversations together. Okay, so for the grounding exercise, here's what I want us to do. I want us to imagine that we're together in person, but we're not together in a conference hall. We're together in some place outside. It's close to sunset. The air is, is cool, but not cold, but cool enough where if we had a fire, it would feel really good, the warmth, but it wouldn't be too hot. The stars are really clear. Um, you can feel a breeze, maybe hear birds. And I want you to listen. If you're deaf, you can listen with your eyes. You can listen with your body. Listening is a full body experience. So I want you to pay attention. Sit in the quiet for a bit. Imagine that we're sitting in a big circle together. And we're close enough where our shoulders are touching on each side. Remember touching other people? Remember what that felt like? <laughs> I miss that, right? So on each side, there's someone close. You can feel them moving. You can feel them breathing. In front of each one of us, there's a pile of sticks. And we're going to start a fire together. We're each going to throw some of our sticks into the fire. So what are the sticks? These are the sticks. You know that pain that you walk around with all the time? You know that frustration that you deal with? Trying to find accessible, inclusive spaces, safe spaces. You know the sadness and the loneliness 
that is just there. It's there all the time. And it's heavy and it's powerful. You know the confusion? The, those sad days, the just sheer exhaustion. You feel that? You know what I'm talking about? For me, it's right here. It's right here next to me, all of it. That's what your sticks are. So you, you, it could be any of those things, pain, confusion, frustration, loneliness. It could be one of those things, whatever stands out to you. Now, imagine there's a fire and we're throwing it in the middle. Just throw it, throw it, throw those sticks in there. <laughs> Let's get this fire going really, really warm. You feel the heat, you feel the warmth, you feel the energy, the transformation of energy. There's so much energy in our pain. There's so much energy in our sadness. There's so much energy in our confusion. There's so much energy in our loneliness, in our frustration. And often we, we, we don't want to engage with that energy. And what I'm asking us to do is to take it and throw it into the fire. And we're going to transform the energy into warmth. And then imagine what that feels like sitting shoulder to shoulder, warm. And anytime a negative thought comes up, it's a stick that you throw into the fire. <laughs> Sometimes when we meditate, we say, just let it go. I can't do that. So I got to burn it. I got to do something active. So we're, we're people who like to act. Let's just sit here for another minute and feel the warmth. Anything that comes up, throw it in that fire. Now we get to share that energy. That fire is like the rage, the rage that lives within us, that righteous rage. That's what makes us act. That's what leads to change. Make sure you're breathing. You don't have to do anything special with your breath. Just don't hold it. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking for another minute. If you're comfortable closing your eyes, um, there's no interpreting going to happen because I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> we can just all, if you're comfortable, either look down or close our eyes and just feel the warmth, feed the fire if you need to. Let's just be still and let's listen. If you'd like now, you can blink your eyes open a little bit, wiggle your toes if you're able to, wiggle your fingers if you're able to, just move around a little bit. And I just want you to listen now to how you feel. You feel different when we started? I feel different. <laughs> I feel like we're all in front of this fire together. And then I love being with you, all of you. It makes me so happy to connect to your energy. You know, the Taino people are, are my indigenous ancestors from what we now call Puerto Rico. Um, and they had this ceremony. It's spelled A-R-E-I-T-O or A-R-E-Y-T-O, Arieto. And 
what it was is they would come in a circle and mostly dance. Um, this is not the best place to have a dance party through Zoom. So, <laughs> but they'd also sit and remember. Arieto means to remember is to live. And so that's what we're gonna do. And, and they they healed together, and and they and they witnessed each other, and they they gave testimonial, they gave their stories, and they believed each other, and they loved each other. And so that's the spirit of of what we're creating here together. I see all of you. I, I have deep love for all of you, and I believe you. I know, I know what it's like. I don't know exactly what it's like, but we're all here for a reason. We're all here for a reason. And so let's get into some more of the concepts here. Okay, so othering and mental health. I don't have to tell you what it feels like to be othered. We just embodied it, right? I do wanna talk about acceptance. So often, if you listen to people talk about mental health and acceptance, it sounds like uh, you see the font on the top, like, like ah, acceptance, <laughs> it sounds like this, wonderful thing that just enlightens you and fills you with light. Acceptance is rough. <laughs> the font on the bottom is rough. It's jagged. Acceptance is hard. Acceptance is hard. There's this concept in, in, in dialectical behavioral therapy of radical acceptance. That's even harder. <laughs> and what does it mean to accept things? So it doesn't mean that you agree with it. It doesn't mean that you like it. And it doesn't mean that you want it. Someone just put, Evelyn put, acceptance is rough. Yes, it's rough. Right? What, it, what it means is that you stay open to what is. Not what I wish. Not, 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 not what I dream of. Yes, we, we have our dreams. And one foot should be planted in those dreams. Right? One foot needs to stay in what, what's real and what is. And, and that's that's a challenging process. And also acceptance is, is core, fundamental to mental health, especially for other people. So let's tie this to, to stopping, listening, accepting. Okay, this is, this is what we're doing. We stopped, we listened. Now let's accept. Let's talk about this a little bit. Yeah, I'm a neuroscientist. I don't talk about it much, but I've done a lot of really cool stuff related to neuroscience. And I'm, a, I'm fascinated <laughs> with how the world works, how we work, how the brain works, how our cells work. And so the picture um, on, in the middle, it's like with the, the positive and the negative little red dots. That is uh, an electron, right? And so we're made out of protons, neutrons, electrons, right? We're mostly made out of electrons. Um, and you know, the natural state of an electron is that there's a positive force and there's a negative force. So there's attractive energy, right? And then there's energy that is opposing. So attraction and opposition. They're actually the most powerful forces in our universe. And I'm talking about physics, right? And so in our universe, built into our universe, our attraction and also this oppositional force. I think about that a lot because often I feel so much counter pressure to the work that we're trying to do. And really, what are we trying to do? We're just trying to be alive in the world and not attacked <laughs> and have access and inclusion and provide that. And how much energy is going against that it feels like often and I get so frustrated and I dream of a world where that doesn't exist and then I have to remind myself that the state of nature <laughs> gravity what form is a planet what keeps things moving the way they do is 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 these forces of attraction and opposition and it makes me think that maybe uh Maybe as humans, this is our version of it. You know, the, the conflicts that we get into, the emotions we don't want to deal with, the, the problems that we end up in, 
<laughs> even when we love each other, right? And it's like, oh, it hurts so much. Or why or how? I, I watch a lot of nature, um, solar system stuff. And to me, it often is like, you know, planets crashing into each other. <laughs> We're going to have an interpreter switch, I believe, soon. Um, yes, OK. Whenever you all are ready. Um, ready, OK. So we have a new interpreter to just pay attention to. Um, so, you know, I, 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 start, I started to think about conflicts with people as like, imagine like planets crashing into each other and, it, and there's a function there. It seems really violent, it seems really destructive. And yet those are often really fundamental forces. It doesn't mean that I don't want a better world. <laughs> it doesn't mean that it doesn't bother me and frustrate me. However, my point is this. So to the left of the picture of the electron is a neuron. Because when people tell me I'm made out of electrons and I'm actually hollow, and you know, it's like, what? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. If I jump off a building, I will splatter onto the ground. <laughs> it, I am experiencing a solid body. Um, so this is a neuron. This is a cell in the brain. And what's really fascinating, this is from one of my earliest neuroscience training, that every single one of the cells in our body is polarized. Dipoles are, are, are a concept, dipoles meaning positive and negative. So a battery is a dipole, right? On one side is a positive force, on the other side is a negative force. And so the reason that's important in our brain is because that's how signals are sent through our brain so rapidly. There's, there's attractive forces and oppositional forces. My point is this, we are wired, we are literally wired to handle the stress of attraction and opposition. That's the wisdom of evolution. That's the wisdom of physics that's in, alive in our brains, alive in our bodies, right? What's more stressful than conflict? It's so stressful. I hate conflict. <laughs> I hate negative emotions. Um, I'm trying not to, but like I would be lying if I said that I, I love them. And so it's just something that I want us to think about. And here I have something called a mantra tree. So mantras are just affirmations that we could maybe think about. And I want us to take a little break now um, until 4.45. I just want you to reflect and maybe write and think. You can get up, walk around, drink water, do whatever you need to do. Uh, I want to encourage you not to go on your phone and check emails and do all that because we're sitting around a fire and we're sharing energy together. Um, cell phone doesn't really seem to fit <laughs> into that picture. If you want to live tweet something, okay, you know, do you. That's fine. But uh, we can do that later too. I also have a desire to check emails, Evelyn, <laughs> so I hear you. Um, but I want us to think about like some concepts. Sometimes we get frustrated because people won't join our efforts, right? And it's really frustrating. And Zenju brought out this point that I have been thinking about a lot, that we need witnesses. Sometimes people don't participate, but they do witness what's happening. And so we can, live tweeting is fine as well too, <laughs> Sarita. <laughs> so we celebrate our witnesses and we see the place of them, people who may not join us in our efforts. Oh, Zoom is frozen, I'm hearing. Um, hopefully everyone can see the interpreter still in my slide, okay. Um, another thing that we can think about is how amazing it is to be alive, how amazing our brains are and how amazing physics is and um, okay, I'm going to pause the recording, or can I pause the recording? Let me try. Okay. Uh, awesome. So now what we're going to do, is we're going to do a full body check-in. Okay, so here's what I'm going to try to do, and, and I'm going to need your feedback, so keep notes. Last time I did this, I did a full body stretch. Afterwards, some people came up to me and said they couldn't participate. So it wasn't really inclusive. It wasn't really accessible. And I felt really bad. I've actually been feeling bad 
ever since then. And I've really been trying hard to figure out ways we can all do something together and actually all participate. Uh, and it's not easy, it's actually a challenge to really try to make sure everyone is included completely. I've been doing some, a lot of reading about accessible yoga, accessible meditation and so forth. Um, and I think one of the things that we can do is a check-in, right? One thing I know for sure, we're all here, we're all alive. <laughs> Even if we feel like we're barely alive, we're alive, right? And so we're just gonna check in and then I'm gonna show you some movement that if you can do it, go ahead. But if you can't, the important thing is to check in, right? We're listening. We're listening to our bodies. Okay, so I'm gonna take off my glasses so I don't knock them off my face. And I just wanna start with our forehead. How does your forehead feel? We, we, you know, we, we frown a lot in our line of work. <laughs> our line of work is, is inc inclusive, social justice, accessibility. If you wanna get up, you can, I'm gonna stay here. Um, but if you wanna get up and move around, this is your time to just kind of check in with your body. So one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scrunch my forehead area where I frown, just scrunch it, hold it. See what that feels like. Listen to it. Hold it. Hold it. Let it go. Does it feel different? Okay, now let's let's move like here, like our cheek area. And just try to like, you can turn your camera off if you want. I'll look ridiculous. <laughs> just a big exaggerated smile. Eww. Just hold it there. Feel that? Oh, these muscles. Ah, you can open. Open your jaw. You can feel if you want, if you're able to feel here when you open your jaw, the muscles. There's a lot of tension in here. You can trace your jaw under your neck throat. One of the things I did at the Reclaiming STEM conference is we tapped. So you can also take your fingers, two or all of them, just kind of tap lightly. Follow the areas where you feel the tension, the bones of your face, right? Okay, what does your neck feel like? Just put your, put your hands on your neck if you're able to feel the warmth. Right? I see sunshine is stretching back. If you're able to do that, that helps. Right? You can also look down. Look down, bring your neck. See how close you can get to your chest. Right? You can bring your ear towards your left shoulder. Keep it there. If you're able to put your hand here, sometimes that helps, but sometimes that's too much. So you can experiment. The other side, you can do the same thing. What about our shoulders? We hold a lot of tension in our shoulders. Let's take our hands, if you're able to, we're gonna put them together and we're gonna rub like this back and forth and create some heat. If you're able to, just put them on your shoulders. If you can't do that, just imagine some warmth on your shoulders. All of that tension, if you wanna roll back. Ooh, my back just popped when I did that. If you wanna roll forward. Right, if you wanna like, move around, you can shake, <laughs> you can do whatever works for you. If you like to dance, you can do a little dance. Checking the time. One thing you can do is you can twist one way, twist the other way, but if you're doing it, 
if you hold your arm with the other arm and kind of pull. Try to sit tall, open your chest. That helps. Ooh, you can really feel that. The point with all this is just to see how it feels. Right, are things cracking? Okay, if you're able to put your hands on your knees, one of the things we can do is push our chest out. Right? So make an arch in your back, push it out. And with your hands on your chest, push back. Right? So this is like that cat cow move in yoga, but we're sitting. If you're not able to do that, if you're not able to move that way, you could subtly do it. Right, you could just move back and forth. See what's happening with your breath when you do this. This is really interesting to think. Am I still breathing? <laughs> Sometimes we hold our breath when we're stretching. Okay, so let's move a little lower into like stomach, chest, stomach, back area. If you're able to reach and touch your stomach and behind you, this is your core. And if you cough intentionally, <coughs> you feel those muscles, that's your core muscles, okay? So we're gonna do kind of like what we did with our face and we're gonna see if we can tighten them. Tighten and hold, tighten and hold, tighten and hold, and then let go. When you breathe with this, it, it really helps, right? So you breathe in, hold, breathe out. Okay, we can keep doing that. Another thing you can do, if you wanna keep doing that, you can, is at your waist, with your lower body still, you just rock back and forth. Rock back and forth, rock to the side. Rock in circles. You can have fun. You don't have to do what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a good dancer. So like, I don't have moves. Like some of you all probably have good moves. You can do that. Crack and crunch. People are saying yes. Um, Danielle is saying I'd love a weekly check-in. Sunshine and I are talking about providing more resources, and I work with the Racial Trauma Center, where we do this kind of programming for free. So definitely, let's keep in touch so that we can, we can seriously do some of this stuff. Okay, so we've gotten down to our waist area. I just want you to think about like your, your pelvic area where you sit. Right now, like I have a lot of pain in that area because I'm sitting all the time because of COVID, because I'm inside a lot. I'm inside more than I should be um, because I'm afraid to go outside, to be honest. I, um, I'm at a high risk, not only because of COVID, but because I'm a black person. And so, and people are angry right now. So I stay inside more than I should. Um, so can we, can you tighten up like your, your buttock area where you're sitting? Tighten, hold those muscles. Those are big muscles in our body. Ooh, it actually hurts me a little bit. So be gentle with yourself. Uh, tighten that up. Hold. Let it go. Tighten it up, hold, let it go. Okay, and let's do the same with our legs. I'm spreading my legs out a little bit. I just wanna tighten, tighten my thighs, tighten my calves, crunch my toes, hold it, hold it, let go. Flex your toes the other way, right? Like this, flex, spread them out, spread your toes out. If you want to spread your hands out, you can too. I, I missed the hands, right? Spread our hands. We can pull in the energy like this. Pull it in. Pull it in. We can ball our fists, right? Arr! All that rage, all that pain. Arr! Shake it. Shake it. Shake it. Shake it. Ah, let it go. Okay, so I, I think I covered head to toe pretty well. Uh, that was uh, 
progressive muscle relaxation exercise. There's more to it. Um, however, the point is that you can relax your body by holding, tensing, and letting go. And you can use your breath to help with that. Okay, so we have an interpreter switch. Okay, now let's talk about some concepts in joy and healing. This, this image of this happy black woman with her hands on her waist, great braids, her head's cocked to the side and she's smiling. <laughs> this is from a poster that I gave at, at a conference called Neural, N-E-U-R-A-L. Um, and what's really important is not only how she's standing, right? It's really important what she's thinking. What she's thinking is intentional. What she's thinking is I am, and then the thoughts that she has about herself are I'm accomplishing, I'm succeeding, I'm proud, I'm joyful, I'm happy, I got this, I'm cool, I'm beautiful, whatever. And so I used to be, and I still, I have to say, because of the kind of life I live and have lived, when people tell me to think about positive things or to be grateful, my immediate reaction is to, <laughs> to curse them out or I want to like, I don't want to curse here um, because it's a sacred space. But you know, like what came in my head was the F word, like F you, like, don't you tell me to be happy. Don't you tell me. And so I'm, I'm, I'm saying that because if you're feeling that way, I get it. <laughs> and the reason I'm bringing this up because I looked at people's brains and, and, I, and this is what I saw. I wasn't expecting, we were actually in the lab I was in, we were studying emotion regulation. We were studying negative emotion regulation, like anxiety, depression, right? We spent a lot of time, especially in mental health, talking about negative emotions. And we don't spend a lot of time talking about positive emotions. So here's what we found out. I'm gonna give you a really, really condensed version of stuff that takes a long time to understand and explain clearly. But the point is this, positive emotion regulation. So focusing on positive things specifically about yourself, All right? So this is very specific. It's about you and who you are and what you do. It seems to really matter. I'm saying seems because this is one study. <laughs> it, hasn't, it wasn't even published um, or, do, or replicated because of racism that I dealt with in the lab. How ironic, <laughs> right? But the data is the data. So it's, it's valuable. And the evidence is that it operates independent of and interacts with negative emotion regulation. So we measured negative emotion regulation and we measured positive emotion regulation. And we didn't really find much with the negative emotion re regulation. These are people that weren't diagnosed with mental illness. This is just people, um, non-diagnosed people. That's what I'll, I'll call them. Um, okay, so here's, a, here's an image of brain activity and there's a bunch here. So I want you to do what's called the squint the squint uh, view. So just like if you squint your eyes, what do you see? If you squint your eyes, just ignore all the words. What do you see on the top row versus the bottom row? What you see on the top row is um, from left to right, we had different stimuli. So neutral images, we had threatening images, we had pleasant images, images of mutilation, and erotic images. And what you see is on the top from left to right, the red means more positive activation in the brain. So you see more activation, right? And it seems appropriate, like neutral objects, there's not much activation. Neutral objects with people, there was more because there's people in there. Neutral uh, threat um, looks a lot like neutral with people actually, which is really interesting. <laughs> Uh, pleasant things was a little more, that's like puppies. Uh, mutilation, it's very upsetting to the brain. And the winner was erotic images, <laughs> right? I mean, reproduction, it's, it's, it's vital to life. And so that makes sense. So the top row were people that had a trait of thinking positive things about themselves. 
they reported that, yes, I, I do this a lot. And people on the bottom said, I don't do that as much. And what do you see in the bottom compared to the top? What you see is everything, it kind of looks the same. <laughs> All the activation is kind of the same. Why does that matter? Well, it matters because being able to tell the difference between whether something is neutral in our environment or in our emotions and dangerous in our environment, in our emotions or pleasant, right? Or if it's a chance to fall in love and date someone, right? Um, it's really important, right? And trauma interferes with that. Trauma blocks our ability sometimes to tell the difference between when something is safe and unsafe or when something will hurt us or when something will help us. So I thought that was really eye-opening. And the point is this, you can go to therapy and you can work on your negative emotions and your trauma. Yes, I, I'm doing that. <laughs> I recommend it. I'm a therapist too. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a consumer and a provider of therapy. However, there are things we can do on our own having to do with positive emotions. You can do it with therapists too, but what you say about yourself, what you practice in your daily life in terms of your relationship with yourself, it has a powerful effect on our ability to navigate and to regulate emotion. Being able to do this in our brain is, is really helpful. All of this happens in less than a second, by the way. <laughs> All of this activity is in less than a second. So we're not even aware that it happens. So that's the crash course in that. I wanna to point to one more thing. So this is Anna. Um, Maria Porras, I hope I'm saying her name right. She's a like beloved member of the inclusive sidecom community. Um, and here she's here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I saw this recently and I love what she said here. And I said your name, right? I'm so glad. Anna. <laughs> um, my favorite thing is getting to mix everything. I love all in one job, research, global health, art, if you haven't seen her little crocheted microbes, they're the coolest. I'm going to show one in a second. Communicating, teaching, and mentoring. And here, here's the point. Authenticity, right? Doing what you love. Being who you are. This is what acceptance is. And sometimes that's hard. If you're disabled, I struggle with a very difficult disability. If you're black, if you're a woman, if you're deaf. The world is not very kind to us. It can be very difficult to accept that position in life. Right? But if we do, I want to think about it a different way. If we bring ourselves to our work, all of ourselves, and if we maximize our versatility and our creativity, our multidimensionality, those are the people that make change. Those are the people that make change. I met Anna two years ago, showing little crocheted microbes and being very vulnerable about who she is. And she's saying, now I'm going to cry, <laughs> right? I mean, it really touched me. And, and I want to tell you, talk about change makers. So here's one of her posts on Instagram. Here's a quote again. My favorite thing is getting to mix everything I love all in one job, research, global health, art, communicating, teaching, and mentoring. And here's a perfect example, okay? She has these two little microbes during Women's History Month. And she says, today I'm gonna to tell you a story about women's health, HIV and the microbes that inhabit the vagina, <laughs> the vagina microbiome. And she goes on to talk about South Africa and HIV. Now, women in the audience, when's the last time you heard anybody talking about vagina and vaginal health and microbes. We, we, don't, we don't talk about it enough. <laughs> we don't talk about the part of the body that we all, or most, a lot of us came through, right? <laughs> Some of us might've come through C-section, but um, we got here that way in one way or another, right? And so I've watched Anna over many years build work and bring herself to her work, right? And then 
because she's done that, because she's she presents it in such a cute way. I mean, th these don't I don't look at think vagina when I look at these. <laughs> right? Not that I'm grossed out by that, but it, it it's it draws a person in. She's using the forces of attraction, right? She understands that people might feel uncomfortable talking about this. So she's attracting people by being herself. And then she's able to talk about really, really important topics. And so I, I love this model. This is one of our community members. It's a really great model of how to be. So thank you, Anna, for, for being here and for sharing yourself this way. And this, this is what I want. This is what I dream of, is to see all of our creativity and our full selves, the beauty of, of our otherness, of our difference. And we bring that forward and we show people what we're made of. There's a lot of power there. Okay. So now uh, I promised a break. Until 5.15, just want you to think about this. What is it that you, what do you like about yourself? What are you proud of? And I want you to write it down and I want you to go nuts. <laughs> Just, I want you to feel like you're, you're exaggerating. That you're that badass, you're that cool, you're that attractive, right? Make a list. These are mantras. This is, this is very helpful in our mental health. So take until 5.15. If you need to walk around, if you need to take a break, go to the bathroom, drink water, that's fine too. Okay, how's everybody doing? I'm, are you tired? I'm tired. <laughs> I'm, I really appreciate everyone being here with me. So, so late on a, I don't even know what day this is, Friday. <laughs> That's how tired I am. I don't even know what day it is. Um, so I'm gonna put a link in the chat to something really cool that I found from another beloved member of our community, Monica um, Felu Mohed. <laughs> if you don't know her, you should. She's, she's a mentor of mine. She's a dear friend. She's a huge contributor to inclusive science communication in multiple ways. Um, and she actually is the person that got me involved with inclusive science communication at a time where I was sinking. I was very hurt from having to leave a doctoral program due to the racism that partially like interfered with publishing that cool neuroscience work. That was the beginning of a complete nightmare that lasted for years. And I was, I was drowning and I was giving up. And Monica is the person who tied me to this community. So you all are, are a life raft for me. You know? And so she just showed me some really cool work that she's doing with deaf people in Puerto Rico. Um, and they made, so I'm putting the link in the chat and I encourage people to open it and just hold it. I'm going to send it later again. Please don't look at it right now. It's very cool. So, <laughs> but I, I want people to see it because what I did is I, I took one of their breathing exercises. These are videos on mental health in sign language in Spanish, but made in Puerto Rico with the deaf community. Really mind blowing. Uh, I don't think there's anything like that here in the continental US. So I've tried to make stuff like this, um, but I haven't gotten there yet. And they, they did it and it's really beautiful. And so what we're going to do now is mindful breathing. And I have some ideas, but I thought it would be really cool to do something different. Um, let's, let's breathe using cues that deaf people use. Because it's different. <laughs> it's a different experience. Um, there's, I'm going to show you a video. So it's two minutes long. What I did is I took one of the videos. I might get in trouble. I don't know, but I remixed it. <laughs> there's a visual of this bubble going back and forth and there's a woman signing. And so I'm gonna say what the woman is saying in sign language um, in English so you can hear it. And then wh where it's appropriate. Basically she's gonna sign practice. This is a sign for practice, right? She's saying it's really important to practice. And then she's gonna say, come on, breathe. So this is like air going into your body and air coming out. 
and she's gonna go breathe like this with her hands. So it's like the chest lifting and you're gonna see this bubble going up and down. I did two minutes of it just on a loop. I want you to, to look at it and I want you to listen to the silence if you're hearing. Hearing people are addicted to sound. <laughs> We're addicted to it. It's everywhere. Right? There's, there's a different way to be in the world. Deaf, deaf people don't have that addiction the way we have it. Right? And so it, it, it makes them more sensitive to other types of energies, other types of, of noise, right? visual noise, physical noise, vibration. So I just want to show you that because it's really cool. I'm going to share the screen and I'm going to play it for two minutes and I want us to follow along together and see what it's like. It's a different experience. Okay. Hopefully you see a screen. Okay. Here we go. So here she's saying practice. Come on. Let's breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, let your chest sink, breathe in, pull in the air, breathe out, I'm going to stop talking. By practicing, our minds can gain better focus and clarity. And this is beneficial to our mental wellness and fills us with a sense of peace. Oh, how beautiful is that? Wow, what a, what a different experience. Right? Imagine if that was the way you went through the world, where it was more visual. That's what it means to be deaf. It means that you have a different orientation in the world. It doesn't mean you're a broken hearing person. It means you're a perfectly fine deaf person with a different way of being in the world. This is called deafhood. Deafhood, it's a concept, right? And the concept is that being deaf on its own does not mean that you're going to be ill or mentally ill or have a bad life. It's that, you live, it's that deaf people live in a world full of hearing people. We outnumber them. And we think that life is all about our mouth and our ear. Our mouth and our ears. <laughs> and it's not. Right? And so the reason I bring this up is because it's, it's, it's instructional. Any, any disability, you know, it's actually a, a verb. We are being disabled by this society. <laughs> it's not an innate state of being. 
no matter what it is. It's just like being black or being born a woman. There's nothing innately harmful or painful about that. It's the world that we live in. I'm going to get to that more. I, I, I jumped ahead. We're still supposed to be breathing a little bit. So I want to show you, <laughs> I get excited about this. Um, I want to show you a different way that um, I worked with a, a Buddhist monk who was deaf on some mindfulness stuff that um, we still haven't completed. But he does mindful breathing with people who are deaf and blind. So how does that happen? How do you do that? So to, to tell you a little bit about being deaf and blind, deaf and blind is not like deaf plus blind. <laughs> deaf blind people are their own group, cultural group, and they deal with being disabled by society, including the deaf community, <laughs> in a different way. And so he did this really thing, a uh, really cool thing where we can use our, our bodies to breathe. Um, you may have seen this before, it's called star breathing. And so if you're able, you can imagine this too, if you're not able to do it. Um, you can hold your hand up like this, spread open, and you're gonna use your finger, right? So for deaf and blind people, tactile touch is very important. So you're gonna hold it out like this. And when you breathe in, you're gonna rise your finger up like the breath coming in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Now you can go the other way. You can go back. Breathe in. Breathe out. I have to move my hand closer because it's getting tired. <laughs> Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, we're switching interpreters. At the perfect time, I promised you that if you let me speak, I would let you speak. <laughs> and it's that time. Okay, so I just showed you two different ways that the deaf community and the deaf blind community who are a part of our inclusive science communication community and need to be more visible in our community. And we're working on that. Um, we have to make it deaf friendly before we expect them to come here, right? So this is part of that effort. I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you um, the last little part that I'd like to hear from everyone either in the chat or if you want to come off mute. Where are we here? Ooh, I'm really tempted to talk about this, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, it's about mushrooms. It's the coolest thing ever. Let me tell you this. Go to Netflix and watch the film called Fantastic Fungi. You will thank me. <laughs> it is one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. And then let's meet again and we'll talk about it. Okay, so here's what I want us to talk about. What can we do when we're happy about ourselves? When we're happy and joyful and have accepted who we are, what we do, what we look like, what our values are like, our experiences, our wisdom, our pain, you know, we like to think we're on the positive end of the dipole, right? But everybody thinks they're on that side, <laughs> right? So our side of the dipole, whatever that might be, right? We like to think like, you know, the, the negative side is over there and we're on the positive side. I think we're right, <laughs> but you know, we, we're human. And so we, we go back and forth. What do you think we could do? I, I wanna wildly imagine life in existence that way. I have to find the chat. Um, chat disappeared on me. Here it is. Apparently it's National Mushroom Day. <laughs> uh, we can stop recording now. Yes, Sunshine. And our, our deal with, as uh, people, uh, people who organize the conference, 
that we, we want people to feel open to be able to share. And what, what we talk about here is, is for us to share. We're in our circle with a fire together. We're healing together. And so we're not recording it. This is for us.